We are welcome back. If you're just joining, you're watching our live broadcast, Life in Christ. And you're watching CMTV. I'm your host, Reverend Betram Ginyu, Senior Pastor of Eternal Life Ministries. We've been sharing about uh, what it takes to grow spiritually. It's an important subject. And I want to share with you today, whether you are an unbeliever in Christ, or you are a Christian, committed or uncommitted, or if you're a pastor, I believe the words I'm sharing with you today, they are not just ordinary or usual. I believe there is grace. And wherever they have been hold up, wherever there have been hold downs, and I pray with you, with respect to that, there shall be a clearing of your runway in the name of Jesus. There shall be a clearing of your runway in the name of Jesus. We shared quite a lot last time. And today I want to talk about conscious growth. When you grow consciously, what it takes to grow consciously, what it takes to advance consciously. Uh, growth can depend on the will of God. It depends on the will of God, but as well, there is a subject on which growth hinges on the obedience, our obedience or our desire or quest. And that's what we will be sharing today about that perspective of conscious growth. Before we delve into praying, don't forget you can send your prayer request through the number displayed on your screen. Don't forget to send in your contributions. Don't forget to send your questions or answer. And for everyone that sends in contributions, we have a gift of SMS or WhatsApp bundle or data bundle for you. So we'll have a word of prayer and we delve straight to discuss about the subject of conscious growth. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, King of glory, King of all the earth, Lord of lords, Lord of hosts, Alpha and Omega, I, Betram, together with those that are under the sound of my voice, Father, I present myself and present them to you, giving you thanks that your word is ye and amen, and your word for everyone's life is reaching them this hour in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that you've considered to bless these who are listening today. Thank you that you've considered to bless me, to be a blessing to them. Thank you that you are, you are increasing their heights and their capacities by your power and by your grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant unto this audience understanding that they may know you, that they may see you, that they may have higher hunger and broader perspective and scopes of their work with you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. So, we are going to be sharing from the letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, we can read from verse 8, but our key verse is going to be verse 11. Our key verses are 11 and 13, and we are concentrating on verse 13. And I want to share something that is very important from Hebrews chapter 5. We are talking about conscious growth. In our last broadcast, we talked about growing spiritually. You need to grow in the Word of God. It takes your growth in the Word of God. It takes your growth in prayer. And it takes your growth in fellowship for you to see how much you've grown in Christ. It takes your commitment to the Word of God. It takes your commitment to prayer. It takes your commitment to the fellowship of the saints and to the fellowship with the Holy Spirit for you to grow spiritually. As we always see the apostles greet and say, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As Apostle Peter will send greetings. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ is a very important consideration. Spiritual growth is a process and you can't deny it. As we will see in Hebrews chapter 5. Anyone who ever truly finds Christ has this desire in their hearts to know God more. And when I talk about spiritual growth, I'm talking about growing in grace and in the knowledge. Any growth in grace that is not growth in the knowledge of the love of God is a glittering growth Growth 
is an irreversible change in dimension. And spiritual growth is a kind of growth in Christendom, in Christ, that cannot happen without love of God and your love for God. You need to have the love of God in you that spurs you to love God. And there is a lot about our love for God, which is shown through something we discussed last time. I call them thresholds. The thresholds of growing in obedience has to do with, number one, believing. First, you have to believe. Second, the threshold of belief is to find that you are obeying. The threshold of obedience is sacrifice. From believing to obeying to sacrifice, you cannot obey without believing. Sometimes you can obey without believing, but because you're compelled. So, but in Christ, you cannot obey without believing, and you cannot believe without obeying. So it takes belief, obedience, for you to find yourself working in Christ. But it takes sacrifice for you to get to some levels of growth. And I said, Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, except a man forgets himself, carry his cross and follow me, he cannot be my disciple. So the first thing we have to prove our love for God is sacrifice. We sacrifice ourselves, pleasure, pride, gains, avarice, greed, loss, desires, in order that we may gain Christ. And I said that is the beginning of spiritual growth. Without sacrifice, you will only grow and end at the threshold. You won't cross. Sacrifice is the thresholds by which we move into heights and dimensions of spiritual growth. So conscious spiritual growth, with, which I'm about to talk to you today, has to do with conscious sacrifices. And what kind of sacrifice are we talking about? We're not talking about sacrifice of goods, sacrifice of, of, of corruptible things. We are talking about giving up pleasures, giving up opportunities you have in life that is offered by nature, offered by men, giving up those opportunities, giving up privileges, giving up rights, giving up even possessions in order to walk in the fullness of obedience with God. This is a similitude of the case of the rich man who comes to Jesus that how, what can I do to enter into the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, go and sell all of your things and, and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. And the man said, how can this be? And then Jesus said, it is more difficult for a rich man, it is more difficult for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle, which was a gate, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus wasn't saying rich people can't go to heaven. Jesus was talking about those who are committed to their riches, those who are held on, those who are attaching themselves to their possessions, to their comfort zones, to their pleasures. There is no way you can follow Christ. There is no way you can grow spiritually without considering to sacrifice things. To sacrifice pleasures. To sacrifice your food so that you can fast and pray. So I talked about these things and I mentioned, I said, if we had to talk about what it takes to grow spiritually, we'll talk about prayer, we can talk about fasting, we can be talking about breaking down altars, we can be talking a lot. If you want to make a list, there's going to be a lot, long, long list. But I have to talk about the fundamentals. And so today I read to you from Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 8. So it says, Though he was, son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. It's talking about Jesus. I'm reading from the NIV. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. All who obey him. Verse 10. And was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. We have much to say about this about the high priest issue, about the Melchizedek issue. But it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. King James Version says you are dull of hearing. And we continue in verse 12. It said, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, 
You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. <laughs> with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. By constant practice, by constant use of their spiritual senses, they've, they've trained themselves to distinguish. They've trained themselves to discern God's will. They've trained themselves to walk in God's way. And let's, let's, let's see what are the elementaries. He said, therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of, number one, repentance from acts that lead to death. Repentance, repentance. Not laying again basic things about repentance. Number two, and of faith in God, not talking to you again about that. You have to believe, you have to have faith in God. Those are elementary things. Those are elementary things. Telling you that don't give up. Your, 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 your suffering is for a while. Don't give up. They are elementary things. Those messages of comfort, they are elementary things. There are higher things. They are higher dimensions. Talking about repentance from death works is all about talking about maturity and spiritual sanity and, and, and morality. We, we should not be talking again about morality. Those are elementary things. Let's go to higher heights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if every day your gospel that you, you hear is about morality, having faith in God, your, 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 your day will break, your sun will shine. Those are elementary. They are higher dimensions that we, we, we need to get into. They are higher things you need to come into understanding of. Have faith in God. It's elementary. Is that not talking about instruction about cleansing rites, cleansing rites. Not talking again about the laying on of hands. Laying on of hands. The resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. Let's, let's, let's move beyond discussing that uh, heaven, hell. Let's move beyond those things. For sons of God, they are higher heights to go. So beyond these things in Christianity, what else is there to discuss? Because on the average, it seems like Christianity and preaching Christian life... It, it, it centers on the hinders much more but around morality about the comfort of, of divine intervention and in suffering. And it, it seems more to be an issue about cleansing, spiritual cleansing, forgiveness of sins, breaking down strongholds on the basis of cleansing, baptisms. About the resurrection of dead is not much of an issue to discuss. Eternal judgment is much of an issue to discuss. Sons of God, we walk in love and we have no fear. And, say, and God permitting, we will do so. Eternal, talking about these things. So these are the elementaries that, as it is believed, Apostle, Paul's, Apostle Paul, to be the writer of Hebrews, is addressing to these people. These are elementaries. So, growing spiritually needs obedience and sacrifice. And what I'm encouraging you today is that you need to understand that some things about Christendom are elementaries. And there are higher heights and levels you have to go. So first, your understanding must be open. You, you must understand that there are higher things. There are higher heights to go. There are greater things to do as far as Christianity is concerned. And we cannot remain on these basic things and the basic happenings of everyday life. Because it is for Christians to bring new things and new happenings or the old things that have always been and make them manifest in our times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for your contributions. I'm waiting for your text messages, your questions, and your prayer requests. I believe I'm already receiving some right now. And I'm getting a contribution here. I'm following up. Yes, Pastor, let's go to higher heights. Please don't forget to text me your name. 
and where you are writing from. That is Royal. We are getting that message from you, Royal. Royal, thanks for your contribution. Thanks for that support. God bless you in Jesus' name. Royal said we should go to higher heights. So there are higher heights in Christianity. There are higher things you can do. Let me give you the reason why I'm talking about this. Um, many people think that the Christian life is a matter of do's and don'ts. Now, Christianity is classified under religions of, of the world. But Christianity in its essence is not a religion. Now, Christianity is classified under religion because they are religious rites. Like baptism, like the sacrament of Holy Communion, which is characteristic of every other religion. That is, religions usually have these rites. And these, these do's and don'ts, systems of regulations. Systems and regulations of, of, of things that are done that are not dependent on the choice of the people doing them, but on the regulation that is set to maintain the sanity of, of the generations as, as descendants come on. And Christianity has this, and because of this right and what we call sacraments, Christianity is classified under another of world religions. But Christianity is beyond the religion because other religions have to do with just paying allegiance to deity. Whereby there's a relationship between the worshiper and the worshipped. But Christianity is not about a relationship between sons of God and God or creation and God. Christianity has to do with fellowship, not relationship. So if you are a Christian, you are in fellowship. Every human being, every created thing, stones, grass, trees, waters, they have a relationship with God. He is their creator. And they are his creation. But not everyone has fellowship with God. So Christianity is a subject of fellowship with God, not relationship with God. And so, when you interpret Christianity to be a matter of do's and don'ts, religious rights and regulations, you, you get it all missed out. And so we have many people participating in Christianity. And as John the Baptist insulted those who came to baptize, he called them brute of vipers. Because they thought that they could come and identify by just washing the cleansing rites. And there are many people in especially orthodox systems that identify themselves as Christians because they take part in those religious regulations and rites. Because you got to baptize, because you got to confirm, because you belong to, to a choir, you think you are a Christian. I'm going to make the difference clear. There is something about obedience. There is something about obedience. Now, it says in verse 9, he says, and once made perfect, that is Hebrews chapter 5, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal, eternal salvation for all who obey him. I want to say that if you believe that there is God, even demons do and tremble. You think you believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, even demons believe. The demons who infested the, the man, the gathering, they, they, they cried and said, oh Jesus, Son of God. What do you want from us? What have you come to do with us? With us? Have you come to destroy us before our times? They knew who he was. <laughs> so you can know that Jesus is Lord. You can know that God is God. You can say, now God get power. You can make all those statements. You can go to church. You can identify with Christians. You can sing Christian songs. Yes, pray and call the name of Jesus. Remember, Jesus healed even those who had not yet believed in him. And the power of God works not only for believers. It works for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's for the whole world. He gave Jesus for the whole world. He gave the power of Jesus. He gave the power of the Holy Spirit for the whole world. And anybody can call on the name Jesus. And there is a manifestation of his power. There is a divine rescue. But receiving him as Savior and Lord of your life is another whole thing. And I say just believing that he's, he's Messiah, his Son of God is not enough for demons believe. But there is a threshold of belief that actually concludes what belief is. In chemistry, in something called titration, there is a finish point of the titration that until one solution into which you are adding the other changes its color. The end of the titration has not come and the chemical process is not considered successful. That's in chemistry. And what can I say again? All right. When you are frying puff puff, in as much as puff puff is in the oil, is being fried, it's not considered ready until often you get the browning color. So you may have everything that you have in mind. You may believe that Jesus is Messiah, 
But until you begin to walk in obedience, until you begin to obey the voice of God, the word of God, the spirit of God, you are not yet a believer. You are an unbeliever. So the first stage of spiritual growth is belief. And spiritual growth is in stages. You grow from glory to glory. And if there has to be a change in your dimension of growth, there has to be something new, some new demand that you have to start fulfilling. Not like, how can I put it? There has to be new dimensions you have to understand and begin to walk in. For example, if you want to grow in a prophetic dimension, it may take you some days off in retreat and prayer. And you will feel the call of the Holy Spirit. Every time there is a new atmosphere open for you, you will feel the spiritual signal. And one of the things that has to set you on the growth to take you from level to level is that number one, you have to be on a quest. You constantly need to seek and to search God for new heights. You have to keep your hunger alive. And if you are to grow in that prophetic grace, Sometimes growing doesn't necessarily have to do with your own prayers exclusively. There will be a leading in your heart to sow a seed to someone who is exploiting a dimension of the prophetic. There will be a need to go closer in fellowship to someone who is operating in that dimension of ministry. And you need to trust in the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you are an intercessor, Interceding for people doesn't just have to do with people giving you their prayer request and you're praying for them. There are higher heights of the intercessory ministry. There are heights of the intercessory ministry where you, you can go from interceding for people to interceding for villages to interceding for cities to interceding for nations. And you should be able to participate in meetings which you were not invited, whether physically or spiritually. They don't know that you are there, but you are hearing the discussions of conspiracies and you can be able as an intercessor to turn, overturn conspiracies. There are heights in the intercessory ministry you can get. You don't need to be called a prophet where you are aware of everything that is going on around you. And mind you, there must be things and procedures that you have to walk in obedience to the word of God. Sometimes you have to pull yourself out for longer times than you expected. This is where I come to say the prophetic ministry is not much as we find today where it's, it's, it's easier for a prophet with an intercessory ministry to run church ministry. The deeper call of the prophetic ministry that is associated with the intercessory ministry, oftentimes you can run church ministry. Because you don't know when it's so sudden, oftentimes you are taken out of the presence of people because there is, there are goals to meet, there are heights God is taking you, there are interventions he can do but make you stand a gap. And when you begin to grow in your prophetic, you begin, your senses begin to open and you can perceive bigger and more clearer in visions and revelations. And you need to know things about people, the wrong things they are doing, the wrong things they have done, not so you judge them or criticize them, but so that you can make their future right. Because God's mercy is what leads us to repentance. His kindness is what leads us to repentance. His mercy is what, is what makes us succeed, even you, the intercessor. I just mentioned about growth in the intercessory ministry. You want to grow in the word, you want to grow in the understanding of the word of God, you need a sound teacher. You need a sound presenter of the word of God. You can watch how they present by listening and by hearing and by praying. You can convert the spirit of God, the anointing operating in the life of the person. By listening to them, by watching them, by praying for them, by praying with them, you can convert the grace. And how do you grow? You grow when you take out time to know more about the word of God and you grow when you take out time to encounter perspectives of the word of God which you have known. And the teaching is not just about talking, but transferring the spirit of what you are communicating physically. So there are dimensions you can grow in the teaching ministry. And you have to understand that the teaching ministry has to grow from level to level. There are times you have to grow in the teaching ministry if you are a teacher of the word. Not just teaching people on the pulpit. 
You can appear to teach people in their dreams. You can appear to teach people in daydreaming, in visions. And when you begin to pray and intercede, even in the teaching ministry, you grow in these dimensions. That those whom you mentor, if there is anything, any quest in their lives, you stay in your place of prayer. As you are speaking in tongues, they are having visions. These are dimensions of growth in ministry that you can consciously get into in as much as it takes God to allow your entrance. So there are heights. There are heights we can get into. There are heights. So I'm talking about Apostle Paul saying, leaving the elementaries. Leave the elementary level of your dealing with God. Leave the level of struggling with moral life. Leave the level of struggling with, with comfort. You have nobody by your side. Why don't you get to the level where even if there is no one for you, even if there is nobody beside you, you can still stand strong in God. Grow beyond the level where you are in a storm, in a crisis, you are waiting for who will come and comfort you. Go, that's an elementary level of Christianity. Get to the level where you are alone, there is no one with you. And you don't need but men. You need to understand and to see the angels around you. Get to the level where you are in a distress. You are not waiting for who will call your phone. You are not waiting for who will send you a text message. You are in the place of prayer waiting for God's voice and waiting for the ministrations of angels. Ah, get higher, go higher. There are dimensions. Why, why wouldn't you enjoy better the comfort, the voice of the Holy Spirit? Why wouldn't you enjoy better to walk with angels as your entourage than men? Oh, there are higher heights to go. So be on a quest. First requirement is be on a quest. You have to set a goal. You have to set a height you want to get into. Leave the elementary level of your dealing with God. Leave the elementary level that your prayer is waking up in the morning, opening your Bible, read and meditate and pray in the night before you sleep, read and meditate and pray. Get to the level where every moment of your life, your heart can be panting after God. Find a way to do it. Modern days, you have earphones, you have headset, even choronko as we call it. You can still look for a memory card. Spend on your spiritual growth. Be on a quest. Set the songs that you want to play always in your ears. Get spiritual messages that you want to play always in your ears. There should be something always on your mind. As they say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Set your mind on a quest. Train your mind the way it ought to think. Surround yourself with an, with an atmosphere. Be on a quest. That's the first thing it takes to grow consciously. In life, you can grow consciously, subconsciously, and unconsciously. Don't let your spiritual growth happen by chance. Let it happen by a conscious quest. And I'll tell you, Jesus knew this. So he said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. Listen to what he says. In verse 12, he says, in fact, though this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. In verse 13, he says, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, Jesus said. They shall be filled. Apostle Paul said, desire spiritual gift. And also that you may prophesy. Desire. There is an issue of desire when it comes to spiritual growth, when it comes to divine feeling. What do you desire? How much are you investing to get that thing which you desire? And some believers are busy drawing back because some other believer failed, some pastor failed, some people failed, somebody is messing up, some Christians are messing up. What about the ones that have not failed? What about the ones that are not messing up? Why do you always turn back to the atmosphere that would turn you down? When did Jesus ever fail? Be on a quest. If you want to grow spiritually, consciously, be on a quest. So we are talking about what it takes to grow spiritually, what it takes to grow consciously, not just by chance. Number one, be on a quest. Be on a quest for a conscious growth. Hallelujah. We're going to continue. I want to get your questions and answers. I want to get your contributions. I want to get your prayer requests. And I'm going to be praying with you for that ministry, for that grace, for that presence, for that atmosphere. I want to pray with you. I want to join my hands. 
We talked last time about it, it, it takes you to challenge the demonic atmospheres around you to grow spiritually. I want to pray with you also about that. So we'll go on a break. We'll be back and I'll take some messages that have come in and we're going to wrap this up and I'll pray with you. So let's go on a break. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Don't move away. Call others to join us. We'll be back after the break.